In this film, I'm going to explore air masses. The idea that by looking at where the wind's blowing from and where the air in the wind has come from and what's happened to it on its way to us, we can begin to understand why we're getting a particular type of weather. I'm Sylvia Knight from the Royal Meteorological Society. We live on an island and the air can come at us from any direction. Although in practice, it comes from some directions more than others. This windrose shows the direction the wind was recorded coming from at Heathrow Airport near London. The longer the bar, the more often the wind came from that direction. So you can see that our wind comes from between southwest and west most frequently. First, let's take a step back and remember that warm air rises, whether that's the air being heated in a hot air balloon or the air above a radiator. Um, I've got a simple demo um, for which I've got a tea bag, the sort that comes with a tag attached, which I've just emptied out and turned into a cylinder of tissue paper. If I set fire to that now, then there's warm air rising from the tea bag, and as it burns down, it's getting lighter until eventually the warm air rising is light enough for the tea bag to take off. So, what happens to rising air? Well, as it rises, it cools, and that can lead to cloud and rain forming. Um, and we call rising air, warm air rising, convection. You can get cumulus clouds with flattish bases and puffy tops where the cloud is bubbling up. More generally, cloud forms when there's more condensation going on than evaporation. And the colder it is, the less evaporation happens. So we can say generally that cloud will form as air cools. It's important to realise that this isn't just when warm air rises. We'll see some other examples of that later. Now we can think about air masses. They're classified according to where they've come from and what they've passed over. The most common ones are polar maritime, tropical maritime, tropical continental and polar continental, with arctic maritime and returning polar maritime being air masses that are referred to less frequently. One air mass generally covers the whole country. However, it can bring different conditions to different places. For example, tropical continental air can bring Saharan dust but it mostly falls on the south of the UK. There isn't much left in the air by the time it reaches Scotland. Let's consider polar maritime air first. Polar maritime air comes towards us from further north in the Atlantic. It starts off cold, but is slowly warmed by the ocean below it as it travels over progressively warmer water. It also picks up moisture from the ocean. As it's warmed, it becomes more unstable and inclined to rise, leading to convection and puffy cumulus clouds, mainly over the ocean. As the air hits land, the western coast of Ireland, Wales, Scotland and England, the air, which was already inclined to rise, is forced up a bit more, forming more cloud and giving us rainfall. Polar maritime air, our dominant air mass, brings cloud and rain predominantly to the west of the UK and it brings relatively dry air to the east. This satellite image is typical of polar maritime air. You can see the puffy cumulus clouds over the ocean and the belt of cloud over the western side of the country. Returning polar maritime air is air which is polar in origin but which swings round to hit the UK from the west or even slightly south of west. But if you were to follow its path back, you'd see that it was polar in origin. Arctic maritime air is extreme polar maritime air coming down to the UK straight from the north over the Arctic Ocean. It tends to bring wintry weather to Scotland and isolated snowy showers further south, triggered by air rising over the local orography. On the 11th of May 2020, the Sunday Boris Johnson announced how we would be coming out of the first Covid lockdown, Arctic maritime air swept down across the country and temperatures fell by over 10 degrees Celsius through the day. Polar continental air will also be cold to start with and get progressively warmer as it travels south, so you could also expect convection. However, the air will be very dry as it passes over continental Europe, so little cloud will form. The UK is a set of islands though, and to reach us, the air must pass over the North Sea, picking up water vapour as it does so. The cloud and precipitation, which is typically snow in winter, it brings, therefore primarily affects the east coast. The longer the path the air takes over the North Sea, the more precipitation there'll be. This satellite image is typical for polar continental air. You can see the cloud-free areas immediately to the west of the land masses, with cloud forming further east when the air has had a chance to pick up some moisture. Ignore the front to the west of the UK and Ireland. The beast from the east in 2018 was a good example of polar continental air. Bitterly cold polar air picked up moisture as it crossed the North Sea, which then fell as snow, predominantly in the east. 
That cold air then met a developing storm, which is when the most extreme weather happened. Of course, the characteristics of air masses can be different in the winter to the summer. Um, if we think about polar continental air, for example, um, which comes from over Siberia and Scandinavia, um, Scandinavia and Siberia in particular can be bitterly cold in winter, but relatively warm in the summer. So polar continental air can bring us bitterly cold weather and heavy snowfall for eastern counties at least in the winter, but in the summer the weather can be much more mild. The processes that work in tropical maritime air are a bit different. This is warm air which is being cooled from below as it moves north across the Atlantic. You therefore wouldn't expect any convection with air rising, cooling and forming cloud. However, the air is being cooled just by moving north, and so eventually it may reach the temperature at which cloud forms, flat, featureless sheets of stratus cloud, because on the whole the air is staying at the same level. As it's maritime air, there is plenty of water vapour available to form cloud droplets. The processes which give big, fat rain droplets are mainly associated with the vertical air motion and circulations in cumulus clouds, so tropical maritime air at best gives us a persistent drizzle. This satellite image shows the extensive sheet of stratus cloud over the Atlantic associated with tropical maritime air. We rarely experience tropical continental air, air that flows up from the Sahara over continental Europe. This is the warmest and driest air we can get. Any moisture picked up over the Mediterranean will be rained out before it reaches us. Tropical continental air gives us clear skies, as you can see in this satellite image. Again, ignore the front to the west of the UK. In the summer, this can mean that some areas get particularly warm, maybe because of their colour, if they're dark, or aspect if they're on the hillside facing the sun. And that can trigger very localised convection, giving rise to late afternoon thunderstorms. There's some going on here over France and Spain. A front is where two air masses meet. In the UK, the weather fronts associated with depressions or storms usually separate polar and tropical maritime air. If there is a front, then different parts of the UK can be experiencing different air masses at the same time. In this image, Ireland is in the polar maritime air behind a front, but much of Wales, Scotland, Cornwall, Devon and the north of England are under tropical maritime air. Look out of the window now. What cloud types can you see? Does that tell you anything about where the air is coming from? You can have a look at earth.nullschool.net to see if you're right.